no kidding. And <laughs> three straight championships would be quite the feat. Yeah. Uh, something that they're definitely going to want to get under their belt. I mean, it, it's impossible to argue against the success of this team, but if they could separate themselves from the pack, no one has won more than two. They want to be the first to do it. But into the bands, uh, Lucian and Braum going to be taken quickly off the table. Mm -hmm. uh, a nod to a special. Yep. Uh, two players of the game, both on Braum, and they say, nope, not today. Not today. And Lucian actually getting banned uh, by Apex, I think, a lot, actually. I feel like Apollo has been the one banning that more often than not here. Ryan's actually off the table here. Uh, and the thing is, I believe that wasn't even picked or banned in the Apex Energy series. So Apex saying, you know, who, who we know you're good at it. Apex themselves probably not really wanted to play it. So actually a one-sided ban in, in that respect. Yeah, so Vladimir going to be taken off the table here. Interesting to see if Zyra and Swain are going to poke their heads up here because we don't have Nidalee or Kane banned yet. Generally, the the been if one gets banned, both get banned. Uh, people yeah. don't want to give away uh, either. Now Kindred taken off the table uh, puts the LG situation. Do you want to give up that initially first pick to Apex? And if so, are they comfortable returning, you know, with Swain, with Zyra, uh, with some of these other first round power picks? That was my thought as well. Is CLG have to identify what the three champion pinches? If it's only yeah. two, if it's only Nidalee and Swain that matter, you certainly don't ban it down to one. Mm -hmm. If it's four, you ban it down to three. If it's three, you keep it as it is. So CLG deciding what that final ban is going to be, what they're going to trade back and forth. and. Trundle, I actually like that, right? That that makes me think, yes, they think there's three super top tier champions available. Yeah. Trundle was something that uh, Apex picked early for Ray in their game one match against Energy. And they said, we don't want to give you the really great bruiser split pusher there to try to beat up Darshan. And Apex have to decide basically between Swain, Nidalee, and maybe one other champion. Yep, and I mean, they did immediately start hovering that Nidalee. Uh, now, a quick hover to a Riven for yep. fun, but definitely going to be the Nidalee lock in here. Yep. And now we get to find out what CLG thinks that top three are. Uh, is it going to be the Zyra? Is it going to be the Swain? We've seen those come out. Not sure uh, exactly if they do fit uh, these guys' play styles, if it is a champion that they want to play. You know, if Swain does get picked, we have to remember it can go both top lane and mid lane. You know, who would be the guy to play it? Darshan, uh, Huhi, not really sure. I could actually see Echo being one of the pickups right here. It was Echo. what... Um, Ray played to great success when he didn't get Trundle, so CLG knows it's kind of next up in the tier also list. Also them. And exactly, it's one of who he's very favorite champions. He told me uh, after MSI, he was so sad that he was uh, he had zero wins on his favorite champions at MSI. He was like 0-2 Aurelian Soul, 0-2 Echo. And actually, they don't care about the Swain. It's the Echo after all. Fair. And instead, taking the Caitlyn away from Apollo, giving it to Stixay, and making him move around. But that means he can get Swain for free. He does if he wants it, and uh, we'll see if he is going to decide to actually uh, go for that. Uh, right now, the hover is uh, <laughs> just a His favorite going. champion, the Hector of the Malphite, it, but, you know. Yeah, 6 a getting to Caitlyn, I think, is actually pretty big for CLG. Uh, it's a champion that was actually consistently banned away from him at MSI. He had some incredible performances on it. I think he's an amazing Caitlyn player, uh, definitely one of his best champions, and it's something that a lot of people have, have shown that they're scared of. Definitely agree. So that was kind of the decision to be had right there. The Trundle one-sided ban, I guess, more important to them than letting Swain stay up in the rotation there. And that's going to be the grab. I think it's kind of interesting, but it's going to be the case. Apex not wanting to show too many cards, so it looks like they'll grab the Ash to go against Caitlyn and save the rest of their champions. No support pick, no top lane pick. Swain, no surprise. That at least will be somewhat of a flex. Yeah, so Swain and Ash going to be locked in. We do have that Swain flex. Can go top, can go mid. Uh, Ash is obviously something as well that has been coming back into priority here. Uh, we saw Wild Turtle playing it. We've seen it quite actually a bit so far in the NALCS, and now we're going to have Apollo taking his turn on it. Um, I mean, the arrows can be extremely impactful. They can also be like pretty uh, hit or miss, right? Like sometimes Literally, they're, yeah. they're just pretty worthless, even if you do hit it on the wrong target. So it's something that you have to be comfortable with. You have to have a follow-up after this initiation. Um, but Ash is like an incredible initiator and can really get you those priority picks if someone's good at it. Well, speaking of champions that can get picks if you're good at it, the Bard coming out from Aphromoo here. So Caitlyn Bard, the bot lane, very scary as a bully duo that can get a lot of damage yeah. output there. And well, if Ash can land ult, so can Aphromoo on Stixay. So team fight starting is there. Meanwhile, Xmithy getting Rek'Sai for himself. And well, a nice tank in the jungle. It's looking good so far. This is, these are what I would say are the two signature champions for the CLG bot lane, uh, Bard and Caitlyn. Uh, definitely going to be pretty scary to deal with that. Um, I'd also say, you know, Ash doesn't match up that well against Caitlyn. I think Caitlyn has a yeah. stronger laning phase. And, you know, if he special wants to pick into melee supports, which seems to be much more his forte, 
it's going to be tough if they do end up in this 2v2 against Caitlyn Bard. The poke is absolutely enormous, and it may be a situation where uh, they're having to kind of show their hand as far as wanting to lane swap. You're not going to want to go into that matchup. Absolutely the case. So we'll see if they want to hide away from that one. Actually goes for a bit of a Thresh. hybrid. Thresh coming through will make the laning phase a little bit easier. And the and Fizz. Fizz, exactly. Fizz coming through. And the funny thing is, it's still a flex. We can see Tank Fizz top lane. We can see AP Fizz top lane. Or we can see Keen playing a full Assassin Fizz and setting the suede up there. And so they're saying, hey, CLG, what matchup do you want in the mid lane? Because we've got three stars of chance to throw at it. Yeah, I like it a lot because it is that situation where you kind of take away that last pick advantage a little bit um, because it's not so obvious where you're actually going to be counter picking. Uh, and because of that, you have to play something that you're comfortable playing against either matchup. So, you know, the Riven is something we saw uh, played by Huni, obviously, but mm -hmm. I, I would more expect Darshan to take Echo and maybe see something like Victor mid lane. That's, that's kind of more of a catch all, something that's been very, very strong so far and pretty high priority itself. Uh, they could go a different way, though, and show us something new. So I'd be excited to see that if it is the case, but it's going to be Victor. Nice. Good call. Yep. So Victor is the champion. A nice sort of well-rounded mid laner. Yeah. You can certainly see him go buy, a bit, buy an Abyssal Scepter, tank up all the damage, not be too worried about it. Yeah. Apex are initially swapping the uh, Fizz to the top lane and actually going, once again, Flash Ghost on Keen, which is what he used on Swain last time around. So I don't expect Apex to switch anymore, which means we probably see Tank Fizz up against the Tank Echo in the top lane and go on down from there. So. Champ select done. How do you feel? Uh, I, I like both comps a lot. I, I, I feel like there's more of a clear plan um, from CLGs as far as like, this is obviously just a very good team fighting comp, right? Um, they have kind of a, a very well-rounded setup. Um, when you look over at the other side, I, I think more of like Nidalee is more of like kind of like a sieging, a sieging champion. It's harder to contribute uh, to the team fights as easily, but uh, I think it's going to come down a lot more to how much they can get someone like Ray ahead because this is a champion you really want to try to snowball on. You want to try to open up the map, look for assassinations, look for pickoffs, and things like that. And um, with Nidalee having that early game priority over Rek'Sai, I think they're really going to have to get something going. All right, well, early game pressure going to be a big hallmark of this game. Let us know if it's going to be that way after all. Tweet at Lil Esports. Use hashtag APX Twitter, hashtag CLGWin on Twitter, and let us know who it's going to be. But a best of three, Counter Logic Gaming looking to get back into the foot of things, back into the swing of things after a lackluster day one performance. But Apex undefeated so far, even in games, the North American LCS. How about a really tough test of the defending champions in front of you to prove just how good your team is? Say Vicious has talked to big games saying that Apex would be a great team and maybe they can prove it right here in their first game of the match. So already just loading in, we did see uh, both Ray and Darshan uh, are actually rocking a fervor of battle. So this is something that's been picking up more and more. Uh, we have been seeing it uh, pretty consistently on Echo top lane now. People are, are kind of moving away from Grass to the Undying actually moving in towards fervor. So uh, Fizz is actually having that as well. I didn't catch what mastery Keen was running, but I'd be interested to see if he was uh, doing anything interesting like uh, Storm Raider Surge or anything too wacky, but uh, I wouldn't expect it. Keen did a fire touch last time he played Swain, yeah, unfortunately. I would expect the, it to be that as the well. The pause box. Oh no, he has 7% magic pen, so it's, unless he's running Warlords or Fervor of Battle, <laughs> he's running that magic. Maybe he's got that Fervor. He's, he's got that, with the Dorn's Blade. That Fervor of Swain, though, you know, get the yeah. dagger to open up. But yeah, so so probably a death fire touch for him as well. Looks like it's Aphromoo who's paused the game. We'll figure out what the issue is right now, but CLG. Uh, to be fair, have not played on this stage so far yet, this mm -hmm. split. They were playing in the other one when they played against TSM on Friday night. But yeah. We'll have to see what that ends up being. Also worth mentioning, you know, who he is going to be running the, the cleanse, actually. Not something I really expected, um, as he did make that swap over to it. So um, pretty interesting. You know, I, I would have expected either more of like a, an aggressive summoner or just like TP, as we did see him having for most of, of Champ Select until mm -hmm. the last second he swapped over. Yeah. Um, but obviously is worried, I think, a lot about probably that you know, the Ash Arrow type initiation, right. uh, something like that, I think makes a lot of sense. You know, if you do get hit up by that, um, that can just be the game in the wrong fight. So um, he's going to play it safe. He's going to run cleanse and should be should be pretty interesting. Yeah, I definitely agree. And, and honestly, I think as we talk about the cleanse on Huhi a little bit more, I think it makes a lot of sense. You've got a Thresh, and Ash, and a Swain, all which can just chain each other's crowd control yeah. together. And Victor, like his job is to be a high damage output champion. He doesn't have a lot of mobility tools. So mm -hmm. not dying is like, Job number one, job number two is now get damage output out. Yeah. Lens, I think, really helps that. But you're right, not being able to match teleports. Well, I either have it, so who cares? But mm -hmm. normally TP advantage can be a really big thing, but that won't be the case here. Key and high mobility, who he with uh, survivability, really, for his choices. Especially it's like 
Cleanse is not really going to help him too too much in lane against Keen unless he gets caught in that you know in that W root. There's going to yeah. be other things that would have been preferential summoner wise. Um, and Keen is going to be a pretty big lane bully here on Swain. Generally speaking, it'll depend obviously uh, down to how the players do actually play it. You know how many E's uh, who he's able to land and stuff. But eventually Swain is going to poke you out of lane, and yeah. not having uh, the teleport can be sometimes problematic with that if you actually do fall behind. And we've seen, you know, when Froggen was playing uh, Swain yesterday, how much attention his team was giving him to try to give him the advantage when he was landing against an Azir. And it's like, once you get enough ahead of your opponent, you're building tanky on this champion already. You can itemize Spirit Visage first. They can't push you out of lane. Eventually, you just have to keep basing. You can fall pretty far behind. So mm -hmm. it's going to have to be something that they are uh, pretty careful about. Uh, but Smithy, obviously, playing a, a high-pressure early jungler himself. You know, not such a, a farming beast like Nidalee, but... The early ganking pressure from Rek'Sai is pretty massive. It definitely is. So I can see Rek'Sai really tilting things, even though Nidalee, of course, generally a good early game jungler as well. Yeah, fantastic. W want to keep you guys updated on what the pause is about. Um, if it was Counter Logic Gaming, indeed, they're saying that they're having some glare on their monitors, a, a lighting issue of sorts. Um, so again, CLG haven't played on this stage, this split yet. Other teams seem to have been okay on, on that side of the map, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll get that sorted out. We've had a pause for three and a half minutes so far. Hopefully this will be uh, sorted soon. We'll get back into the game, but otherwise, uh, we are waiting to get the first game really underway here as we kind of think about how this is going to play out. I want to mention the top laners again and talk about them a bit. We, you mentioned already it's, it's fervor in both these guys, so we're seeing sort of uh, top laners adapt to patch changes a bit more. Mm -hmm. Like Graspy and Dying got slightly nerfed. Fervor has kind of gone up and down in power over yep. time. So, okay, you have, you have tanks running attack speed marks, running fervor of battle as their keystone. And Apex have been using Ray, their top laner, the Fizz in this game, as one of the main crutches they use to win the game. And Darshan, meanwhile, I feel like for the last couple of months has been one of the worst performing players on CLG. And actually one that was getting a little bit abused, you'd seen Hanser really take it to him mm. in the TSM set. Um, at MSI was sometimes a pain point for the team as well. And this almost seems like a good thing for Apex. If uh, Darshan's not playing up to his normal caliber, Ray can really take him over. Yeah, that could, that could be the case. You know, my impression, a lot of... of uh, his play at MSI was more they were kind of picking him into into a lot of losing matchups, playing things that were more about you know the team fight, more about playing for the team, um, you know, teeping in for the flanks, things like that. You know, with the poppy uh, playing into things like Echo, you're obviously not going to have as good a time in lane. Um, I think that now that he does have Echo, he should be able to do pretty well in lane. Um, and I think that it will be a point of contention top lane for sure, but I definitely do not think that uh, Darshan's going to be outmatched here by Ray. Okay. Um, so we'll have to see. You know, you know Ray does have uh, one series under his belt, was definitely performing quite well in that, having a lot of resources funneled into him. Um, but Darshan is obviously a top laner with a ton of experience and, um, you know, a lot of confidence uh, is given, like, from his team into him. So yeah, I think they'll definitely be pretty comfortable with this. Yeah, CLG definitely a very supportive team overall. We had both players say are in chat, especially in six, they both said they were ready. Uh, I've been told from production, it'll be under a minute to go until we get ourselves best uh, started back up. And actually the unpause order has been delivered. So we're gonna get ourselves back into the game. And here we go. Game one of the first match of the day, Counter Logic Gaming taking on Apex. The crowd is cheering. The game is afoot. Here we go. Who's it gonna be? Best of three has begun. 30 seconds in. Apex on the blue side, CLG in the red. I'm cheering on the inside. I'm excited for the game to mm -hmm. get going, too. So. Woo! Oh, here we go. You do it on the outside, too. It's okay. Oh, Aphromoo, eight gold. That's an insurmountable advantage. CLG has earned infinitely more money. That's true. Wow, eight smashing. gold, 508. You can see that bot lane advantage already growing. I wish you knew what area code 508 was. I could give, like, a quick cheer to that city. A shout out. I have no idea. You could shout out, you, shout honestly, out to 508. You could have just made it up if you didn't say that point, and people probably would have gone. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, I'm from the 408. I'm from San Jose. Uh, so, like, I knew that, but we start with 500 gold, so I'm just lost. Yeah, see, we don't have just numbers. We have postal codes in Canada. So oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so I can't even I can't even get involved here. You don't even have, like, area codes on, like, your phone numbers? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. Well, a recall war back and forth. Keen actually low on health. Didn't choose to recall. Ray going to be helping out with the trap camps. Looks like Shrimp is going to start on Wolves first. I actually want to point something out um, about jungle roots that uh, via the changes to uh, like Hunter's Talisman, and Hunter's Machete, mm -hmm. you actually get more total experience if you start on something like Raptors or Wolves because there's more things to kill. Yeah. Because you, you get bonus XP if you're under leveled and can't start at level two. So theoretically, Shrimp actually gains slight bonus XP doing this. And interesting, uh, Afro and... 
and six they're going to be starting here in the top lane i'm not sure if they were trying to call the lane swap or if they were actually the ones trying to avoid it i would have thought that they had a pretty preferential matchup but obviously thresh um is pretty high threat himself you know if he does catch a hook on on someone like bard it's a very squishy champion you can get taken out uh they also did do golems and they actually gave one a piece so afro took one i'm not sure if that was actually intentional or not but he uh did get a cs for himself there maybe wanted to split xp uh or maybe just a little mistake yeah, either way, though, he's got most of a level. The Chime's helping a little bit. Walks down, sees, okay, these guys started Wolves. Now they're in the bot side jungle, so keep in mind the Fizz and the Nidalee are on that southern side of the map and actually already running over to the right-hand side because it's in a lane swap game and they're playing near their duo lane. Even if Special's around running into the jungle, making sure everything's going safely. Yeah. Shrimp. A little bit worried for Darshan here now, though, who has been hanging out a long time. And this is kind of like the classic 4v0 situation. And oh, yeah. usually, you do not stay this long, Darshan, but uh, he could actually be in some trouble if Special can get a hook here. He's got to flash the hook. Oh, oh, he doesn't have hook. He has flame. I'm staying. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Doubled it for, for the camp. He didn't go for the flash play either way. So, yeah. yeah, Darshan able to walk away without losing summoners. And he got level two. He managed to leech that much experience. And Ray did good. not get to do that. Yeah, and he may have actually noticed that X Special didn't have uh, the hook because you can see the play um, buff. Oh, right. Yeah. Buff on, on the characters. You do click on them. So, it's something that they could have actually noticed. Um, and they are smarter than me, so they may have noticed that. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you get those really tricky situations where you're like, no, 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 I know I'm safe. No one else would know this. But, well, so far, so good. He got free experience. That's never a bad yep. thing. Lane swap, otherwise, roughly going as normal. Okay, Apex got to take away a wolf camp that they kind of didn't deserve. But mm -hmm. other than that, I got to say, it's been pretty reasonable. Both turrets should fall without too much trouble. Look at the mid laners, the one CS apart. I kind of like the adaptation here as well from Darshan. You know, yes, he gets a little bit of XP. He picks up two CS. Uh, he does have to blow his TP, but generally speaking, TP is not really used super often early game anyway, so it's not that big of a deal to actually blow that summoner. Uh, something that is a bigger deal, though, is because CLG kind of opted to go top lane, uh, they are going to be giving up this early water dragon, which is uh, pretty impactful as far as having all this extra regen, especially yeah. for a jungler like Nidalee, uh, because it's actually combat with enemy champions. An enemy champion has to hit you, so jungle monsters actually don't stop the regen. So you're continuously getting back health, getting back mana, and we can see who he is kind of starting to get poked out here. And if Keen's already winning his lane by bullying who he out, and he never takes damage, he's just going to have that missing mana regen yeah. to constantly spam Q, constantly spam E, and I got to say, yeah, for best pre-5 Drake, easily Ocean, I think. And that's actually a really big deal for Apex. This is nice for them. Definitely. And this is this is kind of their their payment for choosing to stay in the bot side of the map. And you know, CLG swapped up top, and will they lose a Drake for that? And just look at how Keen is actually zoning him off of this. He's just throwing down the Q, saying, if you want to get that cannon, you have to walk through this. And it's actually, you know, costing Huhi some CS. It's costing him um, some health when he decides to go for it. So it is that kind of annoying... Uh, bird just being zoning uh, constantly so you know he's gonna have to Ooh. be careful and oh it's actually stole it away there by shrimp i don't even think he had vision i don't think he did no, either no that word. was just him throwing a javelin yeah. down the line and well that's uh what a 10 health swing gotta be lucky shrimp to be good gauges. you do have to be lucky to be good sometimes <laughs> so props to shrimp takes a big krug and yeah he's actually behind in levels under smithy some of that was ray uh poaching some of the XP. Actually, no, he, never, he got no CS during the lane swap, so he had manages to leech experience from the lane. He wasn't actually taking the jungle camps away. But either way, it's it's actually been Xmithy farming quite nicely. Shrimp now meeting level 5. And Ray will walk top lane along the rest of his duo. And we have version 2 of the lane swap, or part 2 of the lane swap, going very close to equal as the turrets will fall. CLG holding a slight gold lead, and I really got to give props to them for doing this because it's 100 from Xmithy and 20 on who he is actually, despite how hard that match is being. Farming well enough. Yeah, he's doing very well for himself. And uh, they do actually knock down that turret a little bit faster. And um, we can see that Darshan kind of has been the, the beneficiary a, a little bit of this. You know, he has picked up a bit more CS for himself. And, and the wave should be pushing back towards him still. So he's going to be able to actually set up a freeze here if he would like. And he's getting quite a bit of CS. Wow, look how much effort Apex puts in. I really like the early game play here. Teams that manage to get dragons and, and rift heralds without really falling down in the early game, I think, are teams that are playing very well. This is going to reset if they switch it one more time, but they've got to be careful with this rift herald. Its patience has almost run out. But they are once again playing the plan of yeah. shrimp. Oh, yeah, and sticks are, are coming over, though, and they're actually um, looking to check this out, and that reset could cost them a little I bit here. They finish it. They're pretty low, though. They got to get out of there. Okay, they're going to smite it, and it is going to go to Raven. Now, Shrimp's got to run away. He's low on health. Goes right back in. What? CLG! But the first blood comes through.
Forsic special drops to Smithy. The chase comes through as Keen gets one stick. They flash over the wall to retreat, but now Apex on the other side of the map. They stepped on a cupcake, but it will be a disengage. First kill did go to CLG. They did get more gold from the fight overall, but Apex did secure the Herald and they gave it to Ray. Yep, so once again, that's, you know, three straight games they've actually given this buff to Ray and um, giving him that, that top lane priority uh, is the plan against Darshan here. So Darshan's going to have to be careful. That is going to be a disadvantage that he does have. Uh, thankfully for him, he is up 20 CS right now. So it's not like some insurmountable thing, but it lasts 20 minutes and it's actually very, very impactful. It's definitely a big deal right now. And let's see how the teams choose to play this game out. Do watch that fight one more time. Yeah, so here comes a Smithy uh, from the backside. And Puhi is able to tag him with the laser. Smithy finishes him off for that first blood, but uh, Sticks is actually able to flash back over the wall uh, after going through that barred portal. So uh, a little bit of an early engage there by Afro. He does get caught out, um, but goes out around pretty pretty okay for CLG. I mean, they get first blood. Uh, both sides are blowing summoners, so pretty even uh, besides the Rift Herald, which was already going to be gone. Yeah, and then, you know, honestly, this team has a 600 gold lead right now, and Smithy actually running into Shrimp's jungle as Afro is backing him up, but the Wolf Spirit spotting him out, knowing that they're around. CLG definitely not hidden as this happens, but it's a three-person stack up against Ray on that top lane tier two turret. Very similar situation against Darshan on the bot side as Keener who he trade blows. And look at this, yeah. Smithy, Stick, Say, and Aphromoo battling for this top lane tier two turret that will be going down. We have a very extended lane swap now. A third turret take as the team swap back and forth and constantly mirror each other in 3v0s. Yeah, one thing that's, that's going to be kind of nice for Apex, though, is this is a pretty fat wave that CLG is actually going to have pushing in. And uh, this is going to go all the way to Ray. And I think they actually want to just keep going at this point uh, because they don't want to just give up this wave for free. So they're going to try to uh, just try to push us all the way to the inhibitor. Yeah, CLG faster on the play, and Ray on the level four has to give a bit of deference to these guys. It's going to be hard to get the CS. Too. They have to give that up, and Darkon's right. going to pick up that farm now. That's the benefit of having Echo instead of a Fizz, is your range wave through at least exists to a certain extent. The wave dies a bit faster, and they're able to get quite a bit more done. So, well, Ray does eventually get some of that XP, but Darshan, level 5 to Ray catching that level now. I think that's still advantage CLG. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they're up 1.5k. They can actually potentially just keep this uh, tier 2 tur turret alive as it's still about two-thirds HP. And look at the CCS, you know, between Darshan and, and Ray here. He's actually picked up a lot of early farm. And uh, we talked about how much priority Apex likes to put on on Ray. But if he, if he falls too far behind early, it can be tough to actually compete. Yeah, CLG, their hallmark has always been playing the map exceptionally well in lane swaps. They're one of the yeah. very best early game teams in the North American LCS. And Here's another sort of data point to keep that one going. They have really done a great job in the early game. As we crest 10 minutes in, they're still keeping that 1,500 gold lead. Really solid stuff by CLG. Darshan's gotten that, that massive CS lead because of CLG playing the map better. Yep, you also have to credit Smithy here for actually keeping up with Nidalee in the early game. Uh, Nidalee is an absolute early game farming monster, and any time uh, you're within striking distance, as far as that farm goes, you're going to be happy. He also picked up first blood for himself, so he's actually going to be ahead in gold over this Nidalee very early. And um, I'll be interested to see if he still goes and just straight picks up that Sight Zone, as has been kind of the common trend um, with Rek'Sai players. But he's actually going to finish. Wow, he has he a lot of both. gold. Yeah. That is that is something. He has the Cinder Hall Ruby Crystal. and he has uh, the full sight stone as well. So uh, definitely going to be very strong here early on. Definitely agree. He's going to have he's going to be able to get that vision down. Shrimp did go chilling smite himself, and we'll see if he does the move style build of buying a sight stone as well on top of that one. Right now, not the case. And we have now a Mountain Drake coming through for CLG. So they've withstanded the Ocean Drake regen. They haven't really landed against them very much, and that's been fine. But now CLG gets to knock down turrets really fast, as well as taking further neutral objectives. And it's a nice one to take, as they get later on in the game, it's going to mean a whole lot for them. Certainly, this was kind of their disadvantage from that lane swap, was just the Dragon, and now they've evened that out. So uh, they're ahead, really, in all ways. Um, moving forward here, you know, some bright spots, though. Keen has completed his Rod of Ages. He's doing pretty well in the mid lane. We'll see if he can uh, start to kind of bully who he out but who he has just been playing so far back so safe and uh doing a great job and now we can see smithy uh sharking his way over to the mid lane looking for the attempt on the keen raven form already on and doesn't get any more damage done who he will actually crest 100 minions first here in the matchup and again against an ocean drake what looked like a bad matchup well who he's actually winning the lane so all credit to him doing very well up against keen here who got the sway and sealed he was kind of allowing that to get picked up second round blue side and yeah. he's just playing it very yeah. smart. He's CSing well. He's staying um, back out of kind of the aggression range of Keen. And 
he's just making a farm lane, which is which is great. I mean, if you trade, you're gonna lose those trades eventually because Swain is gonna sustain back up. So who he says, guess what? I'll just never trade. Uh, we'll both farm it out, and and they're gonna get their advantages elsewhere. Uh, one nice thing for Ray, though, he did actually have a freeze going for quite some time. Uh, that wave has been stacking up. He did catch up to Darshan in, in farm. Obviously, Darshan has a pretty juicy wave here to collect himself, uh, but it's nowhere near the deficit that there was earlier, uh, where, you know, Ray only had a couple CS to the 30-odd of, of Darshan. Yeah, it's definitely a whole heck of a lot closer. Darshan will be in uh, pretty much close, actually, in XP. If you kind of watch the XP bar of Ray, he's yeah. most of the way to 8 down in the bottom left corner of your screen. Darshan sitting at about 7.5 right here, so... Yeah, that freeze really did do quite a lot for Apex's top laner, and now his ability to actually fight back should be reasonable. I think that's really why they gave up the Earth Drake. Uh, they just didn't want to risk having this fight with their top laner already behind. If you allow those minions to just go to waste and you lose the dragon fight, the game could actually just be done. Um, so they wanted to make sure that Ray was in a position with this Rift Herald buff to pick up the CS and to become relevant. And if Apex keep wave pressure, CO2 will never hit a turret anyway, so it won't even do anything as far as Dragon Buffs go. Smithy now looking for the play, jumps over the wall. The flash to follow on to Ray takes a shark to the face, and Darshan moves it around to the side. Now looking for the stun on this one. Ray still running out a flash knockup into the stun from Darshan. Two flashes burned for him, but it's gonna be enough. There's CLG picking up a kill. Darshan getting a gank from Smithy and getting a kill. Yeah, perfect CC chain there from Smithy and Darshan. They set it up with the flash knockup. Uh, some pretty big summoner is committed there. Both flashes used by CLG. Ray didn't even flash, so you know, a, a lot of commitment there, but they get the kill and that's the important part. Really nice stuff by them. So, gold lead staying up at about a thousand. All the farm that Ray got a while ago, shrunk that gold lead a bit here, but a blue buff Sino coming in and Shrimp was forced to take it away. He didn't want to risk it getting stolen. So no blue to Keen, but still a blue buff steal, not a bad thing, especially considering these lanes were matched up two on two anyway. The fact they saw Smithy up there meant they could go into that side of the map. They got something done. And who he is, as you uh, predicted earlier, uh, is going to be working his way probably towards that Abyssal, has the Negatron, gets the first uh, Hexcore upgrade, so he has great wave clear with his E, and um, if he does take any damage, he's obviously going to be reducing a lot of that uh, from that magic resist, so... At the same time, we have a special Aphromoo both sitting around level 5. As the sports do hit 6, there is more playmaking ability, especially, you know, from Aphromoo, um, who is very close to that 6. And, you know, we all know the Bard ultimate can be a fantastic initiation, but at the same time, Apollo has been having that ultimate online for quite some time, and we're waiting for his first strike. You know, when is he going to look right. for these arrows? Afro, by the way, is level 6 yep. and hasn't yet learned his ultimate. He's got 3 points Q, 1 W, 1 E. He just hasn't ranked up R yet. I don't know if he forgot that he leveled up by hitting a chime, but I just hope he doesn't like screw up and just, oops, two points in healing. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine, but it could be just something he, he wants to just wait and see if the opportunity uh, dictates that he, he leveled he, like, up. He actually so. needs the heal. Yeah, something like that. It could, could just be something like that. So we'll there see. We he learned it finally. Key in the mid lane, taking a bit of damage. He's going to be okay with this one though. Level 10 on him, an attempt now into the bot side jungle. The blue was stolen by Apex, but now the red can be stolen by CLG. Smithy smites it to make sure it does not go into the wrong hands. That means Stixay is buffless, sadly. Ooh, if I'm Stixay, though, those are the wrong hands. Smithy I know, right? Buff. Come on! It's okay, you know, just going to feel bad for that one a little bit. Maybe Stixay will spend some more time in the gym. He'll get buff eventually. <laughs> this is a weak I got a couple of laughs. Thank you for the couple yeah, chuckles yeah, out there, yeah, guys. There I heard that you. one guy. He's the I, free support. He's like, I, I got, got you, dog. One in a hundred, you know. <laughs> yeah. Good enough for me. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, Gold lead staying at 1,200. And it's interesting because um, talking about Apex as a team, uh, back in the Challenger days, they were a very slow team. Almost all their wins were to Dragon 5 and with Shrimp just hard farming on Rexha the entire game. And they played very, very slow, very gold-focused games. I was like, okay, that's what Apex plays. I think it's not the perfect style, but, you know, that's just what they want to do. CLG actually playing pretty slow as well. We haven't seen a lot of action really out of these teams. Mm-hmm. And some of that is the, the threat of Ash and Bard means you don't get to play very aggressively because you'll get picked off if, if they outnumber you. And I think we're just seeing a much more patient game due to some of the threat of these engage ultimates. Yeah, definitely. I think both teams uh, are pretty confident with their chances moving forward into the game. So uh, they don't feel they need to take any big risks. But you know, one of the major downsides that I would say about playing, you know, always playing super, super methodical, always going for really long games is that you allow a team um, that has playmaking ability like CLG more time to find that fight that gets them back in the game. So if you have a lead, sometimes it can just be best to just pounce on it and try to, you know, go for that killer instinct to try to end out the game. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's obviously easier said than done to be able to always pull that off. Definitely agree with you on this one. Right now we're seeing Darshan push the top lane in maybe as some way of 
leveraging an advantage. 103 minions to him. Ray will be in the mid 80s after he finishes this wave. And it's still Darshan holding ahead in that one due to some of CLG's early game plays. Nice bit of poke out from Shrimp and Afro actually running out of health kind of rapidly. Looking for the ultimate there. Flash out of it special. Otherwise, Shrimp is able to pounce away on that one. You saw CLG look for their early aggressive play. Keen in the front line looks for the root. Doesn't quite get it. But again, drops down a half HP. And only a little bit of poke on a Huhi. Counterlogic Gaming holding a slight lead in terms of cooldowns and health yeah. presently. CLG will certainly take the trade. You know, ultimate from Aphromu, traded for the Flash from a special, obviously is pretty advantageous as long as they can't be punished for that right away. But the cooldown is much lower. You're always going to take those kind of trades. And now they're looking to secure themselves a Water Drake here. Flank TP in from Ray. Hook comes across. This is going to be the battle for the Dragon. A nice smite comes through. Smithy actually doesn't even smite. He just gets it anyway. An early smite by Shrip happened. But it starts trying to take a bunch of damage. He's got to ult out to stay alive. Flashes out instead. And a big burst damage out from Huhi, but he's low as well. The, the Shark comes around. Darshan does go down. And another kill comes through. That's Two for Apex, actually. CLG did get the Drake, but it's Apex who wins the fight. Yeah, and uh, Keen actually kind of called Darshan's bluff there. Uh, and Darshan actually was throwing his parallel conversions backwards, assuming that he was going to take the Lantern and get out of there, it looked like. And as a result, he had no shield from it. He didn't have a stun. He wasn't actually able to pick that up. And uh, after he got ignited, he basically had no heal coming in from his ultimate. So uh, gets picked off there. And a bit of an outplay from Keen, kind of just 1v2-ing Darshan and Huhi for quite some time and coming out on top. Well played by him. Yeah, very well done by them overall. Yeah, CLG made the play first. They had already rotated Darshan down, but Ray's TP flank certainly worked, and it was a great fight for them. They got the mid turret afterwards, and now we're looking at another play, though. It looks like, ooh, Darshan gets arrowed in the face. No and in. This is so bad for Echo. He's going to drop just like he did 12 seconds ago. Is there an Echo in here or something? Because he's gone already, and now CLG running away from their own blue buff. 6A trying to zone him out. Smithy could try to smite this. And there is that Ash Arrow. It's going to be taken by Smithy, though. I did see it go over. Uh, special's low. Three-man knockup. Flash knockup. They get Expecial. The Thrash is gone. Shrimp jumps over the wall. Bard ulti. Again, a Flash Force. That was this time, uh, I guess, Apollo's, yeah, to get away from that one. Mm -hmm. I saw he had no summons, but I didn't see him on the screen. Uh, but Apollo burning both summons to get away from the Bard ulti. So Afro's burning flashes, but he hasn't caught any actual targets yet. Darshan, though. <laughs> Pretty ambitious, I have to say, with that DP. <laughs> the team was was pretty far behind, and the Shark just gets dropped, take out a mini or two. He's asserting his dominance, marking the territory. Yeah. I mean, you talk about wave clear tools. Very rarely are they actually <laughs> ocean themed, but in this case, I knew right. exactly where you're going. Yeah, as soon yeah. As he said wave. I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, he, he TP's right in. Apollo has the ult ready. Uh, Ash arrow, one shot, one kill. Picks yep. it up. So far, so good for for the Ash. All right, and this means the game is now within 500. Counterlogic Gaming up one Mountain Drake stack. That's kind of nice to have, but otherwise, Apex have done a great job of coming back in some of these fights, making some very good plays. And look, okay, oh, Energy was maybe a bit of a weak team. You two owning them doesn't mean very much. Defending Champion CLG, you're doing well against them. Okay, Apex are very quickly being realized as a real contender to the throne. Um, Keen has really been impressing me, honestly. Yeah. He, he looks great on Swain. Uh, really knows what he's doing, and and here is that TP coming in once more. You know, you can see the idea, but look where Stixie is right now. He's up by the wolves. Smithy, up by the wolves. They're too far away. Even Afro running straight down here. They're trying to get in as fast as they can. There's no chance. Starshawn doesn't even have his ultimate to buy time. He can't, you know, TP in, zip around. You know, there's just, it wasn't going to work. Uh, but now Apex gets confident, and Smithy makes them pay. He's able to actually smite this away, lands the smite on the blue buff. The three guys stack up. Here comes Smithy, Flash, Unburrow, gets all three, gets the kill, and Smithy kind of, you know, makes up for that little oopsie from Darshan. Yeah, definitely. So at least a one for one. But still losing your Echo is not great, because now Ray is up in farm, and he's still got the Rift Throw buff, by the way. It's going to last another eight minutes or so on him. So, uh, yeah, good luck being Darshan now. He's only one and two. And Ooh, they are missing the hook right there. So Calculated. Okay. Yeah, exactly. No problem at all. All right, well, they're all sharing the top lane. Wave through. Do these four people up in that lane, which means Apex are first to go back into the mid. Rapid Fire, actually, the first pick up here from Stixa. So um, could just be something where he feels like there is going to be a lot of threat on him, and he wants to be able to have the opportunity to just kind of poke it out. Also, obviously, Rapid Fire, fantastic in siege situations. The proc works on turrets. You can shoot from further. Um, you know, Hurricane is the more standard of the, the Zeal we'll items. We'll probably see it later. Yeah, we certainly will, I think. But 
even just seeing it first is obviously something a little bit different. I think he's just scared of the Fizz, scared of the Swain, scared of these guys getting on top of him. He wants to have that range. Right. I agree it's probably the main reason. And I'm curious, though, like, what if it's like, oh, we got a Mountain Drake, so I am going to go for this. Because could be. that one hits, like, that 50% that bonus damage, because it's pre-mitigation true damage. Like, mm. I, I'm actually very curious. And, and this is one of the things that I really liked about the idea of Mountain Drake, because I know there were some players like, what about the RNG? What if it's imbalanced? What if I get really lucky? And, and there's, ooh, ooh, good dodge. And there can be some element of that, but what I really enjoyed was the fact that players might have to adapt to the game situation and be like, if Mountain Drake, I actually go Rapid Fire Cannon instead, because now better. And that, to me, is actually one of the things I enjoy most about the game. And we'll pretend that Stixa is doing maybe some element of that. Either way, mid lane pressure is be. on. Mountain Drake certainly doing some extra with the turret. They're wearing it down below half here. But the and wave clears in. Honestly, it, it lends more credence to, to what you're talking about. The fact that they're immediately grouping. They're looking to Siege. They have that Earth Drake. Um, they have Caitlyn, fantastic Sieging Champion already. Uh, parallel Convergence um, from Echo. Also, the, the Victor Gravity Field, that's that's stun. Both really good zoning kills to zone your opponents off of the turret and allow Caitlyn to shoot away on that with the Rapid Fire with the Mount Drake. Ooh, nice hook on Darshan. A Javelin afterwards as well. But look at the left-hand side. It's Keen getting a bit isolated by Xfithy. But only healing off one target is not a lot of health. He pops Zonia's, but he popped it early. Stixay got his ultimate back in about three seconds here. So they can snipe once again and look for a target. Shrimp, low on mana as well, can't heal much. And look at the turret. It's about to fall. Next wave, it's, it's certainly going to go down as, as Stixay is going to be able to poke away at that. So CLG kind of flexing their muscles, saying, you have to hard engage on us. And with Apollo not having that arrow, he can't do so. He's going to get oh, caught by the Bartle. I don't think it was actually good. Bartle's will be here, but they're going to get enough damage, and they're going to get him down anyway. It all layers up just fine. Stixay gets the execution kill. But it's now mid lane tier two under fire, and it's a 5v4. There's just not a lot of damage left here. Apex was forced to heal, and they have to flash away. Now the Shark on Darshan doing a bit of damage, but it's still tank fizz. It's not too much. Hook now onto Xfinity. Into the back lane goes Keen. One versus four, but that's a bit too much for him to take, and he goes down. Who he gets the kill? A continued fight from CLG. Two picked off. Both carries are down. They retreat safely. And out of nowhere, CLG just groups up. It seems like Apex had no answer. I mean, this is mm -hmm. a team that was in the gold lead, and they just see two mid lane turrets. They give up two kills, and uh, that was pretty impressive stuff from CLG to be able to just recognize how much more powerful they were in that group of fights. They're, they're saying, you know what? Nidalee is not going to be able to enter these fights without dying to Victor. You can't use that gold on your champion. And, and Ray, even, he's having trouble getting in. Um, Keen did get into the back line, but he just simply wasn't tanky enough. And it all started, obviously, with Apollo getting caught. He did not have the Ash Arrow because it already did miss earlier on Huhi. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a miscue, but it does allow them to set up here. And they are able to pick up that first kill. And then it continues. We see Swain coming around from top lane. He's going to be looking for the flank. They don't want to give up two turrets in a row. And as he comes in, Victor is just going to unload his full arsenal onto him. He's going to get ignited up uh, to deny that healing. And, and down's gonna go keep. They just focus him down, and honestly, Smithy and Zarshan were able to take so much damage that the rest of the team was safe to just fight its way with only one and a half items there. It worked out nicely. And I got very well done to the CLG squad. Yeah, really. Thousand gold up. Really pouncing on the fact that the Ash Arrow was down. I think that was uh, a reactive move somewhat from them. And, you know, the Ash Arrow is a fantastic initiator, but at, at the same time, it has a pretty lengthy cooldown. It's not something that. Uh, you can just get away with missing for free. Definitely the case. So, CLG doing a good job. Now up to Mountain Drakes is their stack, which means they can keep pushing ridiculously fast. Baron's also going to be super quick, by the way. Two item Caitlyn going for another Zeal. Yeah, that's going to get burned down if CLG ever wants to go for it. So there's, you know, very heavy notice now. Apex, beware of the top side of the map. I'm interested as well to see that Keen actually did not decide to go for Spirit Visage. Most people have been going that kind of tankier version of Swain, and he's building into an Abyssal, so he's going to pick him up some MR. Um, but, you know, having having that, that passive from Spirit Visage is massive, and just the extra HP. But here comes Smithy, looking for the initiation. Oh, he couldn't quite land oh. him down, but that's a three-man Bard ulti. Land at the stun, get some damage across, but a nice lantern <clears throat> brings Apollo to safety. Now on the front side, Arrow hits Xmithy. The Zonia's popped by Keen in the back line onto Stixay. It's Ray looking for the kill, trying to get him, and yes, Stixay goes down. Apex to keep going. Ray will not die. A double for Shrimp, making a third kill coming through, and a triple for Shrimp. Four kills to nothing. What a great fight for Apex. Disaster for CLG as Apex strikes. Ray cleans up the AD on the backside, and they're going to go straight to Baron. I don't think who he's going to be able to have anything to say about this as uh, these guys are all pretty healthy, uh, you know, if you don't count Ray, and it's it's looking like it's going to be a free Baron. 
It looks a little bit free, although they're going to make him try to pay for it. Who he looks to fight Keen, but Keen pops Ghost and just chases right in. But tries to predict the Flash, Whoa. can't quite do it properly. Either way, though, who he gets out, loses the Flash, and Blue Team is slain Baron Nash for Apex right back in this one with the lead. Yeah, not just right back in it, they're ahead. A big time play here. Uh, we see Smithy goes to the initiation. Uh, they set up the Bartle, but look at Ray already TPing in the back line. And although this bot team uh, time for CLG to set up, Ray's in the back line now. He's right onto your ADC. There's no one back there to peel him. There's no one back there to do damage on him. And he's just going to actually delete Stixay. Uh, we see the execution there from the flash pounce by Shrimp, picks himself up a quick double. And after that, it's lights out. Uh, the front line has crumbled. They lost their back line threat. Uh, sure, who he's able to stay alive, but that was all set up by Ray. They put the pieces together there. Uh, he was able to get a great flank and just, they're showing why they put so much priority on this guy. They give him the Rift Herald buff. They try to give him as much farm as possible, give up an early dragon so he can collect more farm and he's making them pay. And every single game, no matter how far behind Ray starts, whether it's 0-2 against a 3-0 opponent when you're against energy, whether it's down 7 CS to 35 or something obnoxious like that. Well, here's Ray up 22, six assists, big, you know, huge backline threat, caused two that team fight well. win. Yeah, two levels up. Ray makes it work. Apex makes playing around Ray work. He's huge. It's going to be very, very scary. And uh, it's only going to continue to have that backline threat onto Stixay, who's who's going to have to be really careful. And anytime uh, Darshan and Smithy want to be dive buddies, want to go uh, deep onto their opponent, it's going to be really tough uh, for Afro and Huhi to keep Stixay safe. So that's something they're always going to have to be aware of. And now they're going to try to stem the bleeding as much as they can. They don't want to give up too many free turrets to this Baron Bumble. And you saw on the graph down there the value of target selection. Sticks they got half the damage that, that Apollo did in that team fight because he got deleted first. And even though the rest of the lanes matched up pretty close to equally as far as damage profiles, not having an AD carry makes you lose most battles. Mid lane going to go down pretty conveniently. Baron Buff going to make that not too hard, honestly. They're going to go right back up the top lane tier two. And it looks like it's not going to be too big of an issue at all. The question is how much can they get during this Baron Buff? Apex I think this activating one's well. Too. Yeah. At least it's low. CLG Ooh. trying to wave through some. Yeah, they're, they're going to try to fight tooth and nail for it, but you can just feel that it's not going to happen. Afro is going to eat the shark. And the turret goes down. Now the attempt for the fight. No, we're going to come across and also a missed Ash Arrow. So that should signal the retreat from Apex. And actually, they re-engage and they land the sun on Akeen. But will they really follow through? Looks like the answer is no. CLG tempering their aggression at least a little bit here. Just by the slimmest of margins, Afro able <laughs> to dodge out on that alt. Ray actually went for the assassination on the support, does get his flash out, and that's that's a win alone. They pick up the turret, uh, they get a summoner, but Keen may be caught here. Oh, Ray tried to buy a bit of time, trip of the wall, to jump on back. They still want Keen. He actually turns off the Raven form, and now Timber Bait's gonna land onto Shrimp. Do they have the kill? They're gonna try with the gravity while the trap is there. Shrimp should be dying. That's one, that's a shutdown. But in the back line they go, and Afro is dead. Ray making the work happen. Looking now for his sticks, who can't go anywhere. A double kill for the Fist. Now with a dark shot, a hook on a Huhi, but he cleanses out. He's gonna be fine. The shark not gonna land either. Gravity well gonna buy him sometime, but no, Ray is still there. And now a triple for the Fizz. It's first three of the game. Apex smashing this fight. Darshan stayed out too long. He's gonna probably get caught here too. Uh, this Fizz is going to be able to chase him down with a blue buff. He's not going to run out of mana, and Darshan is stuck away from home as Apex is looking to close in. Still looking to knock down Xmithy, who takes the tunnel, pops the locket shield, and... Oh! oh, yeah, there we go. Nice job, leads the target. Apollo makes sure it happens. Bullseye from Apollo. Go. Yeah, really nicely done. I mean, when NASA's used to lining up things from the Earth to the Moon, you figure Apollo can land someone halfway across the map right here on Summoner's Rift, so... Good stuff here. Turret's gonna go down and on to the first inhibitor in the mid lane. Apex, after this mid game, can do no wrong. Ray is just going huge in these fights. The triple kill uh, chases down with the assistance of Apollo. It's a delayed quadra for Ray, but not too shabby uh, from the top laner. And here's how it all started off. Ray starting with the blue buff, actually key because he could have gone oom um in this fight. Uh, does pop back and forth over, and, and CLG want to fight. Uh, they're feeling confident, and they are able to actually get the kill here on Shrimp right off the bat, but Ray is still lurking in the back lines. Uh, their dive buddy system, once again, kind of biting them as Afro gets eliminated by Ray, and now it's Stixay's turn to go down, and, you know, while Darshan and Smithy are diving deep, Ray is just wreaking havoc in the back line. They have no answer for him, and it's seeming like it's just not working out in the team fights whatsoever. Yeah, certainly not. They don't have a a good answer for this Fizz. The, the front line can't really hold well enough. And Ray wreaking havoc now. 4, 1, and 6. He's up 
27 minions. He's uh, two levels still over Darshan. He is big right here. This, this isn't a Janna or something that Afro is playing where he can actually solo peel the Fizz and keep his AD carry safe. He's playing Bard. He has to have something to actually link that, that Q to uh, to actually CC the Fizz. And it's, it's never been the case that he has the opportunity because the Fizz is back there by himself. He has the playful trickster to dodge out these, these stuns, these CCs, and it's just sticks to it. Kind of, kind of getting run down yeah. by this Fizz over and over. It really is. Apollo now. Lord Dominic's regards added to the lineup, so he's trying to go for some tank busting against this Rek'Sai and this Echo, yeah. as far as the damage up was concerned. And well, Apex have now gotten a Mountain Drake themselves, so keeping the buffs pretty close to equal. And honestly, Apex are the team in the driver's seat here, the ones that are leading, so nice attempt. But Keen actually gets the red, I think. I saw him get the 67 gold, so. Yep, yep. Keen does have the red. There we go, the auto attack's gonna come through. We were right after all. It is worth mentioning, though, CLG, you know, they're still within striking distance. They're, they're only down, you know, it is quite a, bit, quite a big lead, you know, 6.5k. Uh, it's definitely not insignificant whatsoever, but they have another dragon. Uh, they have double earth, so they can obviously take the objectives very quickly. If Apex makes a mistake, you know, Baron can be gone off the map very, very fast. Obviously, this is uh, who he who has most of his core items. He has a perfect hex score. He has the Abyssal, the Rylai, so his ultimate is going to do massive damage. It's the three item Caitlyn. They're picking up a lot of their power points mm -hmm. to be able to kind of compete in these fights. And if Apex makes a mistake, if Ray kind of messes up and can get taken out, then they definitely could go off in one of these fights. I think there's definitely the tools for CLG's backline to stay safe. They've got a yep. locket done. They've got a Mikhail's as well on Aphromoo now. Uh, theoretically, Ray should not kill people through Locket Shield into the Kale Seal. Theoretically, that's 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 yeah. the the idea here. The problem has obviously been that Smithy is is diving deep, and and while Aphromoo has had this McHale's, it's not enough to keep him safe. Yeah, and we'll see if it changes this time around. Ray now has Guardian Angel. He's got one slot left open. 80% crit. Caitlyn is here for Stixe. He can definitely carry a team fight, but Apollo actually has good armor penetration for the frontliners. And, then, and in real DPS in these team fights, it's actually pretty close to equal, to be honest. But Stick to, Stick Stay, Stick Stay with Hurricane will try to multiply that somewhat. Ray still on the split push. You can see just how well the last five minutes have gone for Apex. That entire gold lead earned right then. Six turrets taken down. CLG have not taken one in quite a while. Looking for maybe bot lane tier two if they ever get a lead here. Pretty. Pretty uh, high pressure situation here for CLG now with the base cracked open. Mm -hmm. One fight can easily be the game. Go straight down mid lane, don't even have to deal with the inhibitor turret. Uh, Baron is alive as well, and Apex has one of those Earth Dragons for themselves, so definitely going to be able to crack that down pretty quickly. So, you know, Ray is just looking to kind of draw as much pressure over here as he possibly can, and Apex is going to start up the Baron. They definitely are. They're going to try to bait CLG in, and now's the invitation of. How well can you play around this? CLG, such an experienced team. Darshan, nice take on the blue buff. Ray won't contest him anymore. But this is the big thing, right? Is Baron Bates are one of the more complex things in competitive League of Legends? CLG have a wealth of experience. They're millionaires in experience right now. So Apex, the new kids in the block. Okay, yeah, you got especially you got some real good veterans here, but coordinating this properly is another test. I'm gonna keep saying it's a test for Apex. Look, you're being CLG, that's great. Now, in this specific case, how you play it out. And that, that is obviously the difficulty, especially, you know, we talked a little bit about the Nidalee versus Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai does kind of fall off a little bit as far as Lakey and power, but Nidalee, it's, it's hard for you to use all this gold that you have because if you do dive in, there's always a chance to just get absolutely popped by the victor. So he's going to have to play it safe. And Apex, once again, just going to start it up. They're going to keep uh, trying to bait them in here. But we do have Smithy uh, with those, those tremor senses, and he sees it. They're killing it fast. They're popping the teleport to come in. And the bar ulti to slow down the attempt on Baron. But Apex already peeled off. That is Afro missing an ultimate now. They're starting and to the re-attempt 3,000 health. Darshan wants in for the fight. 1,000 HP. Smithy's there, and he gets it. Smithy secures the Baron, and his special's down as well. Counter Logic Gaming are winning this fight fight and looking for the battle. Keen jumps forward, pops the zone in, he'll back up the half HP. Smithy zones out Apollo. Now it's the CLG frontline looking for Ray. He pops over the wall and now it's a Smithy dangerously low, but Catalogic Gaming has kited out so far so Shrimp's good. And Shrimp's gone and Sticks, he's taking him out. Looking for another one. Keen does not have Zonius and Keen goes down. A double kill for
with a new AD carry on Counter Logic Gaming. And now Ray has Guardian Angel, but he has been surrounded. Darshan wants to do the damage. Smithy rejoins the fight as well. Looking for a bit of damage. Ray the will pop gets GA. And Apollo too. And the bop gets stopped on. Yep, Apollo's gone. Ray's gonna be next. They all missed time the GA, but that's a shutdown. It's an ace and a Baron steer for CLG. A catastrophic Baron play for Apex. Smithy coming up huge as he did time and time again at MSI. The team falls behind. Smithy comes in clutch, steals the Baron. Ray is not able to get to Stixay, and Stixay just went off in that fight. Beautiful positioning of huge amounts of damage. A strip stepping on that trap sealed his fate, and CLG turn it right back around. It's Apex that are going to lose the first inhibitor. And wow, I just cannot believe that, but such a huge turnaround. The respawns will come in in time, everybody, but Ray is up soon enough, and CLG will only take a middle inhibitor for that team fight. Of course, they're going to take a lot of that gold lead down. They're actually still down in gold, but they can position for Elder Dragon spawning in 35 seconds and use that to wedge themselves even farther ahead. And here's the fight. So Apex sees uh, they're, they're zoning them off and they say, hey, we can finish it. They backed off. Let's go for it. But Smithy is lurking on the backside. The pink ward is still there. He gets in. Perfectly times it. Shrimp goes in for the pounce, but the smite is too late. Smithy steals it. Especially in the meantime, has already been taken out. It's a 5v4 already. And now Keen going deep, but he's very low. And here you see Ray tries to get back onto 6A, but he's zoomed. He actually can't do it. He can't get in on him. And now 6A is able to get constant damage out, uses the bar portal, gets around the side. This is Shrimp's fatal mistake. Steps on a trap. Pop. Here it goes. Just. Amazing positioning um, by the bottom lane duo here from CLG and all the credit in the world to Smithy uh, for stealing that. You know, it's got to be a frustrating situation for Ray. If he had mana, which actually comes back to Darshan stealing that blue buff from him earlier, this could have been a very different fight. Definitely could have been. But that's what it comes down to in some of these cases that's here. That's the game. Yeah, that, that's works. how the game works. Sometimes really minor things like that can actually be the breaking point here. And now is the attempt for the Elder Dragon. Baron buff still on CLG for long enough to matter, but it's Apex trying to contest with still a gold lead as a team. 3,000 health, another smite by coming through. Keen in the front line, and the back line is in a bunch of trouble after trying to run away. Darshan in the front as well, but it's first the Rampage as Keen pops the Zonius, and a two for one, though Ray is making it work in the backside. Look for Stixay, he has the damage, yes he does. Plus 370 for him. Now Darshan kites back in, but he's suddenly realizing that he is very much alone as who he is dead, and Darshan is the only one alive for CLG. Three up for Apex, and there is a somewhat open middle inhibitor. And Afro just tried so hard to stay alive against Ray, can't do it. He actually even picked himself up a Hextech Proto Belt, tried to jump away. He, he portaled over, and Ray is just getting too much done in the back line. This has been the story. When Ray goes big, the team wins. Look at him, already in positioning, in onto Afro. Afro does pop uh, the Mikhails to try to just get out of here. He pops his Proto Belt. He's going to try to run, but Ray is on him. He's, he's on him non-stop he can't get away he tries to pop all not able to do that and keen has done so much work in the meantime you can look at the health bars across clg six day was already low darshan was already low they're all getting taken out by the ambient damage by the aoe here from keen so uh keen and ray the kind of two-piece combo here just pin pinching in from either side and absolutely destroying clg in that fight i gotta say there's a sour taste in my mouth that after me with so long to try to cast the bar ultimate he cast it at the very end on himself yeah. to try to stay alive but if you're getting flanked upon, just ult the other team's backline and think deal with Fizz, right? Yeah. Just just 5v2, half the team of Apex. I, I don't think know if they, they just if didn't the, know that Fizz was there. Yeah, maybe the cooldown was down, but at a certain point, Afrimu had the chance to press R. He cast a protobuff at some point, and he had the ability. So unfortunate there. I'm sure there are mistakes on both sides, but either way, it's a team fight win for Apex, and props to them. Props to the Ray flank. Good job of him making it happen. He did that without teleport, by the way. He was pre-positioned for that fight. And now Apex are the ones once again ahead. Baron Buff, of course, has dropped off of most of CLG now. I, I did actually just check, and, and Ray was actually on a CLG ward coming from the bot side, so CLG was aware of it. Mm -hmm. They decided to take the fight anyway, so definitely a miscalculation there. Uh, rough stuff, kind of logic gaming. Making some good plays, making some bad ones, though. And Apex, even though they did lose that Baron fight, came right back in and found a good way to get themselves back in the game. Still, it's CLG with one of their opponent's inhibitors down. Uh, the game is definitely very, very close. Apex has a massive team fight win, but is not able to secure the Elder Dragon. So uh, CLG certainly is, is not out of this. You know, had they been able to get something big off of that, it would have meant a lot more. It is worth noting we're seeing Keen continue to not care about the tanky build. He's got a yeah. death cap already. Void Staff's probably that last item there. And so he's the, he's the much more damage-focused Swain build here. 
And, and, and you saw yeah. payoff in that fight. He, mm -hmm. he was absolutely shredding Stixe uh, and Huhi and all the front line. There's so much damage coming out of this guy. And with Ray in the back line, it's not like Stixe just gets to sit there and free fire onto this Keen, right? To just take him out. So it, it definitely can be really problematic. I've also got to kind of, you know, nitpick a little bit here with CLG. There's no Executioner's Calling on, on Stixe. There's no uh, Marilla Namacon on Huhi. There's That's no healing debuff whatsoever here, except for the Ignite from Afro. And yes, Ignite is up relatively often, et cetera, et cetera. He has Lucidities, he probably has Insight, so it's gonna be a local down on the Ignite. But still, there's there's really no reason to not invest the 800 gold as Stix A and pick this up. I definitely agree with you here in this one. I think, yes, he needs Magic Resistant Lifesteal to try to survive what this this phase is sending towards him, but you still got to dip towards Executioners. It's still the right choice yeah. here for Stix A. Or, or if they're saying, you know what, Stix A can't get in to shoot on him, then it has to be Huhi getting him Morellos. Someone has yeah. to do something uh, to make sure you always have that healing debuff up on the swing. Don't come for free pass. Yeah, but anyway, it be here we go. The Void Staff in that situation. But here we go, the rush for the Elder Dragon with two Mountain Drake buffs. They kill it pretty damn fast. Apex coming around, but it's not going to be in time. Nice pick up there for CLG, and they force the flash away thanks to Barley. That's two flash flashes used for Tempered Fate here. So Counterlogic Gaming with a buff lead, a cooldown advantage, and by the way, 30% bonus true damage thanks to Elder Dragon with Baron spawning in 15 seconds. They've got a minute and a half still, more than that actually, to work with the Elder Dragon, and it means CLG going for a Baron bait with the poke advantage. A huge mistake, honestly, from Apex to just not be in position for that Elder Drake. They are the ones who have been winning these fights and, and dictating the pace of the game, and then they just give up a free uh, Elder Drake, and that's, you know, Pretty costly mistake because that gives huge priority to CLG now on the Baron. And Fizz constantly trying to bait out cooldowns by jumping over the wall and back. Darshan looking for the damage on Akeen who's wearing a blue up, taking a fair bit of damage. Get the lantern right back out. Now to the back line goes Ray. Pops the Zonia's early Afro kites over the wall. Darshan holding the front line. He's ignited. Ults back. Stays at half HP. Garden Angel up. 1,000 health on him. Apex runs away. Their back line stays safe. Their front line is low. CLG's also, but Darshan holding a teleport. He's going to recall, heal up, get back into this mix. As CLG look to play the Baron bait. Hawkshot comes across. CLG waits it out. TP into the mid lane. Ray, I guess, can try to fight Darshan, but Darshan's full health with a dragon buff. This is not the easiest fight for Ray. Kites out. Nice little lantern, but well, Darshan gets the shield. He's all right. Mid lane cleared out. And actual minions took down CLG's bot lane tier two turret, by the way. So Apex getting a random surge of gold, but CLG can burn down this Baron. Quite literally, actually, and Apex are not here to stop it. Ray TP'd in, though. They definitely want to contest, but it's going to be too late. Baron on top of Dragon 5. Yeah, good luck with this one. Ray goes in a bit by himself, but here comes Keen. Oh, he almost gets evaporated, but he buys a lot of time. And Xpinth gets rooted up. Ash out of the back line. Sticks is getting shredded apart right now. Ray puts on the damage, but a nice flash kites out. Doesn't matter. Ray gets him. Smithy burning down the two for zero. Then it's advantage Apex despite the buffs. Ray continues forwards. He's still got Guardian Angel, and CLG can't kill him. The Magical Junior to get away, a stun on Array, almost pops G8, and they get that. So the Guardian Angel down, but still, CLG Force Draw has to flash away from its specials. Hook and Apex have a 5v3. Baron buffer or not, Apex are ahead right now. Yeah, what an arrow from Apollo. Sneaks through the whole team, catches Stixay, allows them to get that 80 carry kill. So impactful. And CLG, it's crunch time. There's 30 seconds on both uh, their jungler and their 80 carry. And Apex could actually look to try to end here. What's well, one inhibitor down? It's going to be two. Will they try to push for the game? Well, for CLG, their minions are tanky. The melee minions will have huge reduced damage thanks to the Baron buff still on three of those members. They're going to back off. And it means that Apex can't really push any farther in. 10 seconds on. Stick say 10 now on a smithy. And minus three for a Baron is a roughly equal trade in gold, but the problem is they lost two inhibitors. Yeah, so here's the fight once again. We see Afro is already low. Uh, these guys are taking some damage. They secure it up, but Ray, once again, able to get deep. He actually draws them back in. Uh, Keen as well, diving deep, pops the Zonias. Look at this Ash Arrow, threads the needle, catches Stix A. He does try to QSS, but Ray's already on top of him. And Stix A is pretty much gone from this fight right off the bat. Uh, Smithy gonna burn out as well. And it's just the backline threat from Ray, a fantastic arrow from Apollo. And that's gonna seal the fight for them. There's a nice patience by him to not burn it any earlier. We saw the, yeah. the end of that fight. So now it's time to reset. The middle inhibitor is back up. Apex, their base is fine. It's good enough that they can play around with it and not worry about mini wave. But they've got mid and bottom inhibitor dead. Now, there are no neutrals to play for. It has to be the base that goes in because the Dragon and Baron are both gone for a long time. So it's Apex just playing the map now with minion wave advantages, with a 4,000 gold lead, and with Stixe getting a Hex Drinker to survive Ray, not getting any kind of healing reduction to deal with Keen, and 
I don't know that I understand he needs to live and, and I, I respect that, but someone needs to get some kind of healing reduction out there and it's not coming out of CLG, making Keen's life real easy to play this AP build. It's also tough for Afro to even get the Ignite at the proper time when he's always being chased by Ray. Uh, Ray, though, does not have a GA. He sold it up uh, after it was expired, and, and he's getting chased down. He, got, he has to be careful here, as CLG kind of has the mid lane inner track here, and Apex is maybe looking to flank. They might want to fight. They might be looking for that one. By the way, bot lane is pushing in really heavily as well, and that got pinged. Pings from the blue team. Apex knows that bot lane is huge and pushing in, and CLG have to be careful because some empowered recalls are fast, but some of them are slow. The team split up, but Apex not looking to punish the split up counter logic gaming. The wave will get cleared. And Smithy spots Apex heading top lane for the triple inhibitor to push the game down. They're going to have to clear out these waves, and it's going to be tough as uh, likely we will see Ray just kind of pushing in the mid lane, pushing in the bot lane constantly as no one can really deal with this guy right now. And if they do decide to collapse, it, it's going to be tough for CLG because CLG is in a position where Apex just has to wait. They just have to wait for the minions to do their work. They have super minions pushing in in two sides, and CLG is likely going to have to be the ones that pick a fight very quickly uh, before the minions just take them out because there's already going to be minions on the inhibitors. And Keen just 1v5ing on this side of the map. Actually, Ray's with them to so make that 2v3 or something to that effect. Ray Sticks A surviving the javelin, dodging it barely. But it's still the top lane that's being attacked as they make sure to shepherd in the rest of the minions. Keen is actually still hitting the bot wave, by the way. He's right in front of that yeah. turret. Ray just buying so much time, but his mana bar getting a little bit lower. He's got no real regen. Keen gets poked down to half. Apex one, running out of resources. One Nexus turret is already at half HP, so they are doing a good job kind of chipping away at this, trying to play it patiently. But yeah, Ray is low. He's going to go for the assassination on 6A. And they land a bunch of CC, but he gets that with a quick silver sash. Keen pops Zonias, but they can go back in for him. The burst comes out. They blow up the bird, man, but the turret's down. Barzulti forces several flashes. Special has to get out as well, but it's 50 wants him with Guardian Angel. He lands a lot of CC, and Special is a second casualty. There's a minion wave on CLG's Nexus, though. The opposite of game one of the finals. Apollo gets blasted. A triple kill for Darshan, but someone has to save the base before it's too late. Yeah. Ray getting chased down, will get slowed, pops the teleport, and he will get stunned up. So that's four for Counter Logic Gaming. Xmithy's back to keep the base alive. CLG are in no real risk, and that's now four kills. 35 seconds on some of the respawns there. Keen's first up on that one. Can CLG get anything done with these mini waves so bad? I don't know. I mean, they're going to go for at least mid lane inhibitor. I think they can probably do that. 6A does tank up a javelin. He has a lifesteal, though, uh, to be able to heal back up. And Smithy is on wave clear duty. Darshan has TP. Yeah, they should get middle inhibitor, no problem. There's no turrets up. Inhibs don't get backdoor bonus. Oh. They don't need the minion wave here. And yeah, Shrimp can try to be scary. But at this point, at this kind of range, players this good should not be tanking javelins. And they're going to knock that one down without too much worry. The wave can get cleared up, knock down the minions. Middle inhibitors respawning. That was a cannon minion, not a super. So mid inhibs coming up very, very soon. Bot inhib isn't far after that because Apex got them one after the other. So the map will reset back the other way. CLG will have the inhibitors. Apex will not. They're only missing one, but it's still not exactly ideal for them. Yeah. And during that time, CLG have a Baron respawning. So here's the fight once again. Ray is going to go deep. Nails the fish onto Stixa, and we see Apollo, perfect position, lands the arrow, but he has the QSS backs up and this is where Keen is gonna get punished for that more glass cannon build the Afro Moog Knight comes in and they blow him up and now it's full retreat mode here for Apex as they're just gonna get collapsed on a special goes down and everyone's scattering trying to survive here uh, but it's too little too late it's cleanup time Apollo goes down and as we know Ray eventually gonna get chased down on the backside here too one thing to keep in mind though for CLG is there's only one Nexus turret remaining you know, it has lost a little bit of health. Backdoors are a potential, especially, you know, from a, a fizz that this, that this is fed. If sure. you do let someone get into your base, sure, you can go over to Baron. Sure, you have an inhibitor down, but there's no turrets defending your base. You can just take inhibitors. You can yeah. potentially even take the game if you're not careful. So yeah. it's always something that's going to be a threat. With no turrets, an instant backdoor, even with inhibitors up, with no turrets, you just auto win if they're not in the base at the same time. Yeah. With a turret, you usually have enough time as CLG to come back and defend that, to usually punish that kind of play, get an ace, and try to win the game. So yeah. Counter Logic Gaming, I think, can feel somewhat safe, but just not too brash. Baron up in 12 seconds. Counter Logic Gaming have mid lane control. But look at that Apex saying, yeah, but top lane has no turrets, so we can take an inhibitor. And they also play for the red buff. They get that onto Apollo. That's nice for him. Red buff does deal damage on hit as well as on the dot, so it's really nice for Hurricane users like this Ash. Enormous wave as well, pushing top lane here for CLG. So someone is going to have to go answer it. 
uh, but Ray does not actually have his TP right now. It's almost coming up, and CLG is kind of trying to get the, the inside track, uh, trying to push down mid lane and, and make someone go answer top lane to try to get Baron priority. Exactly, and they have Baron priority. Sadly for them, though, Rift Herald was, sorry, Rift Scuttle was taken by Apex earlier, so that blue circle is going to be vision for them mm -hmm. for the next half minute, roughly, as it despawns. CLG looking to make the rotations, using Mapsical Trader to cut a few seconds off the travel time. Seeing if they can catch up with Key and deal some damage to him, but he's going to heal right back up on this minion wave. Worth mentioning as well, GA picked up by Afro. He's sick of dying to Ray, yeah. and it's something that they're going to have to deal with, but they are starting up the Baron, and here comes Ray. 5,000 health on the Baron. Shrimp is in range. It's going to be spotted by Xfinity conveniently. Key to the backside. Sticks A in the middle of enemy champions getting blasted right here, but Shrimp dropping as well. It's a cluster in this pit, and it's so far a kill onto Sticks A. CLG loses one. They might lose a second. Guardian Angel pop. Afro's dead after the Guardian Angel as well. And it's Darshan stuck in the middle of the team. Ray out of mana, but does it really matter? He's the tank. Keen getting all the work done. Darshan's getting blasted, and he just barely survives. Ray loses Guardian Angel, but stays alive. Darshan running to the left, trying to buy a bit more time. Counterlogic Gaming can maybe try to play the minion waves to, to stay alive a bit longer. Darshan regening with Ocean Drake, actually. It's actually a really big deal how much health he's getting back with this one. As long as he stays out of combat, he's getting massive amounts of health back. Now back to 1,000. He will eventually die, but it'll take even longer now as he runs away from Shrimp, gets blue spotted, jumps to the minions, flashes away, still buying time. Darshan refused to go down, but the rest of Apex are inside the base trying to win against Counterlogic Gaming. It's a two versus three on the other side as Darshan buys time. But here comes Ray for the game-winning push. The arrow lands on the front line. They're trying to pick off Huhi, and they're going to do that. Apollo might be next up, but Ray is tanking the turret, so Darshan's we should ignore the fact that Xmithy is there. Darshan, though, actually died. He didn't make it back. It's Apex trying to win the game. Xmithy picks up one. Ray hitting the turret, and he can't stop Xmithy. So they're now on to the Nexus. But Five seconds on 6 They're all is coming up. back, and so is Afmu. The game is not they're over. Xmithy is actually invincible, pushing the rest of them out of the base. CLG just squeaked. Squeaks by the skin of their teeth, and they don't lose the game just yet. What a hero play by Smithy and Darshan buying so much time allows for the respawn. I thought that game was over for sure off of the back of that fight, which was an absolute disaster. It could have been even worse if Smithy did not nail that smite. And there's a power play now a little bit for CLG because Apollo is dead for longer than Darshan, so theoretically, they can make play for this. Trouble. Actually, Shrimp overextending. A couple hits will do it. The snipe won't be enough. And Ray drops in time to block the shot anyway. But as I was saying, Darshan will be there eight seconds before Apollo, which theoretically is a dragon power play. That trap from Shrimp actually saved him uh, because it procced his, his jungle enchant, which procced Rylai's, which slowed Sticks A and did not allow him to get the headshot. The headshot plus it would have would have killed him there for sure. So uh, <laughs> the smallest of margins yeah, there for really. Shrimp, which would have been huge because Elder is up and without a jungler, oof. Yeah, that's, that's taken here. 54 minutes into the game, 4,000 gold apart. These teams are neck and neck. Tell your friends, watch this game. It is insane. And by the way, they're going to have at least one more. Best of threes. Bless your soul for changing <laughs> the format. I'm so glad we get more than one this game. This game is hype. This game is super hype, and we're going to get more of them. Ix Smithy looking to clear the waves. Uh, sorry, the, the, the wards and make sure that they can get vision control for this dragon attempt here. The CLG duel in coming out of their base down the mid lane. Darshan to join them. Apex, though, actually with a bit of wave control. They make CLG react to them. They're pushing the waves in first. Baron buff, only 30 seconds left on the few members of CLG that have it. Yep, Ray did purchase another GA. It's on cooldown, though, so he's not going to have that. He's going to have less combat effectiveness. And although he's had a massive lead he's over Darshan the, back door. the whole Ray's time. Ray's backdooring. He's going for it. He's going for the attempt. And again, there's no turrets anymore, so Ray just making the team react to him. CLG has to walk over to Ray, which means that Apex can walk over to Baron. Or sorry, to, to Elder Dragon. Does CLG really the, can't get both. Do they have the confidence though? I mean, Smithy can steal this and he's been um, on point with his smites. They're going They're trying to Ray. chase down Ray. It, it's Smithy. I think Smithy should leave and stay alive. He's getting caught oh, though. No. And Smithy's going to die, which still gives over Dragon. Yeah, they trade Smithy for, for Ray, but that Dragon was going to get taken regardless. That, I don't think matters on a shrimp. I think he's going to live no matter what. He gets the lantern. I think that's a mistake by Smithy. Ray baiting for a dragon, I think, is fine. I, I can accept that trade, but Smithy did not need to be there. I think uh, if Smithy wanted to stay, he needed to wrap around to the backside somewhere where he could not get collapsed on like that and, and try to just tunnel over and go for it. But he did not have a ward, so he couldn't. And now a special may be caught. Top CLG's going to go for it. Jungle, look look at the for the 4v4, and Huey gets blown up, though. That's a huge mistake, and Darshan getting popped as well. Africa took the great hook by X special, and now the chase in. It's a two versus four. Counter Logic Gaming must run from this one. Stick say, got to step up, look for Shrimp. He's going to do the damage as minion waves flood into CLG's base. All Apex has to do is buy the time. 
Six Day does not have Flash. He can't go for the big play just yet. And Darshan losing health rapidly. Two versus four. Huge minion waves. Apex looking to win the game right now with the minions Dragon Minions are on the buff. Nexus. There's three super minions, and they may actually just finish this off if CLG can't get back right now. The Nexus is falling. It's down to, uh, you know, about half HP already. It's down to a third HP. I think this is the game for Apex. I think game one is going to go to the new guys on the block right here, making the points happen. Here comes a 4v2 push. Do they even have the damage? No, they don't. There's the Nexus going down. A game one win, a huge one, a slobber knocker for Apex.